Good morning everyone, today I want to talk about the fastest way to level up to level 60. Now I'm going to state several different methods as well as the pros and cons of each method because just showing the fastest physical way to get to level 60 is kind of boring and it doesn't actually help you that much in the progression of your gear because it's not very organic. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the first thing I want to show over here is, as you can see, I am level 60 already. Uh, I actually leveled twice already, so this is actually the third level or the third over level, so I get even more X cubes, which is pretty nice. But how did I level up so quickly? Well, the very first method actually requires you to go all the way back to Central Retemp over here at the Yellow Portal Retemp. And what you're going to be doing is you can see there is now a rank 2 variant where all the enemies are level 45. When you run this, if you are a premium member, you get almost 200,000 EXP running it in a party of four. So you get the 10% EXP boost, you get the 10% food boost, and um, that's it. So a 20% boost, and you will get almost 200,000 EXP for every single run that you do. However, if you stack a lot more EXP boost, you can get up to 400,000 EXP per run. So that is actually really, really good considering that uh, I think most of you guys probably have a lot of yellow retem triggers since we just finished the event where it was mainly focused in retem and a lot of you guys farmed in retem I'll note a lot. So something that I want to point out is in the rank 2 version, you actually get red dominas. Yes, you get red dominas, so you don't need to craft them, you don't need to waste your photon scales. You straight up get one red domina, you get a golden prim sword at plus 30, and you get a golden prim armor also at plus 30. So this is pretty big. Now, if you're a non-premium member and you're a free-to-play player, it's perfectly fine. You still get 165,000 EXP per run with zero buffs, nothing going on. So again, if you just stack a bunch of buffs, you can still get at least 300k EXP per run, which is pretty substantial, to be honest. So if you only care about getting to level 60 as fast as humanly possible, you don't care about gear, you don't care about materials, you don't care about anything except for the level itself, this is the fastest way to do it. Because remember, they have removed the EXP penalty when you run triggers. So regardless of what level you are, you will always get your 200k EXP or 300k EXP or even 400k EXP, depending on how many boosts you have running. And it's always going to be consistent, regardless of what level you are. So yes, this method is going to be faster than questing. I know a lot of people are asking me on stream whether it was better to do questing or just to spam yellow triggers. And the answer is just spam yellow triggers. You will get to level 60 in like two hours. It's very, very fast, very, very quick. Now, the disadvantage of just spamming the yellow triggers is, of course, you don't get to explore the Kavars region at all. So you won't be unlocking new things such as the Ryukur devices, such as the different cocoons to get skill points, such as all the different enemies which give you a lot of star gems, especially when you kill the veterans for the first time. When you kill all the different special boss enemies, you get star gems for killing it the very first time, and you get it again for killing it 5 times, 10 times, 20 times, stuff like that. So since you're not actually exploring Kavars, you're missing out on all of those star gems, but in turn you are leveling up to level 60 extremely quickly. The second method is of course going through all of the different side tasks. As you can see here, I have not gone through all the different side tasks because I actually used the third method, but the side tasks over here are a great source of EXP, 300,000 EXP. They're all a bunch, a bunch of EXP, very, very substantial amounts of EXP. And the best part is, look at this one. This one actually gives you a million EXP. But the most important thing is it actually forces you to go around the open world. So it makes you explore all the different Ryukur devices, find all the different region mags, as well as all the cocoons. So it allows you to explore Kavaris in an organic way while you're doing these quests. And so questing is one of the more favorable ways because you can do this solo and there is zero EXP penalty. Because remember, if you are running the yellow triggers over here, if you are in a party of four, you actually get a 10% EXP bonus. So uh, you do want to run this in a party of four just to get that extra EXP. Unless, of course, you don't care about efficiency, which then I would question why are you running yellow triggers? If you don't care about efficiency, you might as well just do the questing method over here. Now, the disadvantages of doing these side quests over here, such as Kavar's red containers, finding all the red boxes, 
is all of these quests are going to be a little bit more time consuming especially when you go to specific areas and it's like kill 20 formers and kill 30 of these mobs and you're just running around in circles you're trying to wait for these mobs to spawn and then there's like a bunch of other people also doing it at the same time now don't worry pso2 is not like other mmos if someone kills a former's mob around you you still get credit for it so that is actually a big plus it's really really nice that we have that so you're not fighting over mobs and different rooms and room hopping and stuff like that you don't need to do that as long as you're in proximity when that specific mob dies you will get credit which is very very nice and there are some side quests over here which require you to do the field races um, some people don't really like the field races it seems a little bit confusing i personally have not done it yet but um, from what I've seen on stream, it is a little bit confusing to set up and to start because it seems like you just randomly join a room with other people already racing. So I'm not entirely sure how the field racing actually works, but when I do have a little bit more time and I do test it out, I will definitely make a video explaining how it works. Now for the last method and the method that I personally used, and that was of course farming in the combat zones. So. In the combat zones, you have the Beluga runes, but this area has two ranks where the mobs are level 40 in rank 1 and 51 in rank 2. So I personally have not grinded in the runes area that much because I have been grinding in Lost Central since when I completed the story, I was already level 54. So it didn't make sense to grind over here since, uh, you know, I wasn't getting a lot of EXP. So I went over here to Lost Central. Lost Central, there's rank 1 where the mobs are 45 and rank 2 where all the mobs are 55. So I grinded here where all the mobs are 55 in rank 2 until I hit max level. And the advantage of farming in the combat zones is this right here. Low temperature damage resistance plus 50% for 1 hour. This is a consumable, and you get that item by completing trials in Lost Central. You're gonna meet one of these Dark Falls looking enemies, it's gonna say trial, you complete it, and then you get that as a trial reward. It's a guaranteed reward, so there's no RNG involved in that. Now that trial doesn't pop up super often, as you can see, I only have two of these right now, and I literally grinded all the way from level 57 until 60, so three entire levels, just pure grinding, and I only managed to get two of these low temperature damage resistance plus 50% but it is still a big deal because I'm pretty sure these are going to play a very important part when we start exploring the gorge area because as you can see here you will take periodic damage in this field you can reduce this damage by increasing your harsh environment resistance which is of course the low temperature damage resistance so this is going to play a big part in the end game stuff when we are farming for those ancients because as you can see here, this is not a tradable item and you cannot sell this in the personal shop. So it's in your best interest to start farming a couple of these so that when the new ancients hit next week, that you can just pop these. You have your region mag, which gives you 10% more low temperature damage resistance. And then you also have your food buffs. If you eat any Kavaras food, you get up to 30% low temperature damage resistance as well. So with all of that added together, you have 90% resistance. So hopefully with 90% in the gorge area, you're going to be a lot safer and you won't get destroyed because right now with 40% resist when I went in I just got utterly destroyed so uh, yeah you probably want as much resistance as possible over here in order to go to the gorge area and start farming the reason I say this is because the gorge area is counted as an exploration zone so it is a 32 man zone however all of the mobs are level 64 so that means all the mobs are four levels above our level and I believe that the new relic series weapon is going to drop in the gorge area as well as a bunch of end game items so you want to make sure that if you are pushing for the end game stuff and you want the best of the best that you want to be prepared so that when the ancients do drop next week you can run in there and you're good to go. Now there is another item that you can get called the Icicle Orb when you complete trials in the Kavaris region. And when we read this description over here, it says that you can exchange items with Resso in Kavaris. So Resso is actually over here on the left side of the Kavaris camp. And you can see that she is the preparation supply manager. Unfortunately, her shop is not open yet. So when you talk to her, there's nothing happening. You know, there's no menus. However, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to exchange all those icicle things into the low temperature damage resistance maybe there will be a hundred percent one however i remember watching in the ngs headline during the trailer they did show Resso's shop 
where you could exchange different materials in order to build up even more low temperature damage resistance. So that is something that we definitely need to look into in the future when her shop is available. So that is another plus on why I prefer the grinding method because I'm building up a wealth of all of these resources so that when specific a chain shop open, I'm good to go and I can get all of the nice materials that I need. Um, another thing is, of course, all of the different Kavar's yellow triggers as well as purple triggers. I know there is a high demand in the Kavar's purple triggers because a lot of people are fighting the Gigantics or farming. They want to see all the good loot. So uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of demand for these items. So in conclusion, there are many ways to get to level 60 or max level. It really depends on what your goals are and what your playstyle is. So just use whatever method you personally prefer. It really doesn't matter about efficiency that much. Like getting to level 60, so what? You know, everyone's going to be level 60 by the end of the week. So just because you rushed it in like two or three hours isn't going to make that big of a difference. So, you know, just do whatever the heck you want. Have fun and uh, do whatever content you personally enjoy. If you like questing, do questing. If you like combat zones, do combat zones. If you like spamming yellow triggers, then do that. So really up to you. Just play however the heck you want. They all have their pros and they all have their cons. Okay? Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. Can I say it's up to your welcome for the heals the boost so right?